guys, how's it going? Today in this video, we're learning all about 360 camera photography. We're going to learn unique and creative ways of when to use your 360 camera when other cameras just won't do the job. So for 360 photography, I use the Ricoh Z1. And the reason is because it has dual 23 megapixel one inch sensor. That is unlike any other camera in this price range. Now, just a bit of information about 360 cameras before we get started is you typically want to shoot using a selfie stick. Now, the selfie stick automatically disappears when you shoot because this camera here shoots 180 degrees and this one also 180 degrees and stitches out everything in this area called the stitch line. So when shooting with a selfie stick, it automatically removes it, which is pretty cool. We don't have to do anything. Second tip is when we're shooting and there's direct sun, try and keep your camera sideways to the sun. For example, let's insert a sun flare here. If there's sun on this lens, the other lens is completely shadowed. So when there's a stitch line in our photo, one side will be dark and one side will be bright, making it a little bit more difficult in post. So if you can, just turn the camera sideways to the sun. That'll help. So I've been in Switzerland for the last two weeks and I brought around the Ricoh Theta Z1 with me because I wanted to show you specific examples of when the 360 camera can be used. Also, if you're interested in editing on your mobile, then stick around to the end of the video because we're going to go over how to import, edit, and export simply from your mobile because it is just that easy. All right, hope you enjoy the video. Let's get into it. This is my favorite case use for the 360 camera is when you're in a gondola, there's literally no way to take a picture of the gondola and everything is too tight. So this is the best. We have a hole here and then we have a hole out here. So let's start with this one. Okay, we gotta get that, mat, that mountain in the background. So let's try one from up here. Let's go. Here's another example of taking a selfie. We won't have our hand in the photo either, because I'll just shove this somewhere. So it's like a handless, stickless selfie. Here it is. Go here. I'll just jam this in this rock. Versatility. Especially when you don't have anyone to shoot you. 360 is perfect. Okay, so here we are in Ticino, Italy, and today we're gonna get a sitting shot, but I'm not gonna hold on to the selfie stick, so it, it looks like someone else is taking our photo, but we have a super unique perspective. I'm gonna have the camera out here like this and sit on it, that way we can get under the bridge and get the whole thing behind me as well. So we'll turn our timer on, three seconds. Oh, tuck it in there. Three, two. Try a little bit longer. vertical wall and I want to get the photo so I'll just grab onto the this little rock right here and have the camera in my hand but you won't see it in my hand so it looks like someone else is taking the shot and that means you could be hiking by yourself and still get good action shots so here's an example Okay, so here is another example of where the 360 camera is the best choice of camera because you can't fly drones here and you can't actually get a shot, a perspective of the building we're standing on because Jordan can't go over there and take a photo of this building. But with the 360, you can get everything. a waterfall and the only way to get like, a good visual is I can't fly a drone, it's soaking wet. 
and I can't think of the turret, so we'll just stick this way out there and hopefully we'll get a good shot of it. Alright, for this next shot, I couldn't even bring my DSLR up here because I kind of had to climb a rock wall. However, for this one, it is going to be a tiny planet photo and I know some people think that tiny planet is a bit kind of niche or a bit like gimmicky, but however, they can be cool at times. And in this particular spot, since we're way, way up in the mountains, we're kind of like on top of the world. So let's actually take a photo of us sitting on top of the world, way, way up high. Like I think we're 3,500 meters up right now. All right, here we go. All right, for the next one, we're going to do a like bear straddle over the camera. And this will look like we're kind of holding the world sort of. Okay, let's try this. Okay, for the next series of shots, I'm going to find a natural vignette. So basically I'm gonna shove the camera through something and then it's gonna provide like a leading line towards the subject, which is me holding the selfie stick. So we're gonna do it in this tube here, of like the chain, chain tube with a cool drop, so. The previous shot was with the fence, now this one is with the tree. So you just jam the selfie stick in the tree and then you get this wonderful background of the mountains in there. So it's quite simple. Three, two, one. Sweet! Should be good. All right, we've now made it to the editing portion of the video, and here we're going to be editing our 360 photos on our mobiles. So you need these two apps. It's called Theta and Theta Plus. So first we're gonna connect our phone with the Theta app, and then we'll click on the shooting portion, connect our camera, and then I'm going to show you the best settings for shooting to begin with. The default will be our shots will be in, if you look at the file format, JPEG or RAW. I shot RAW for this video because I was editing on my desktop. However, for the sake of quick editing on mobile, we cannot edit RAW photos on mobile, only on desktop. So we're going to select JPEG and then shoot in HDR. So we want to click down here under option setting slide over to handheld HDR. That is the option we want to use. And then also under settings, we want to set it to a three second timer, or you can choose whatever you want, but three seconds is plenty for me, so that works. Now we're going to set up the camera. And then we have a photo on our phone. Let's take a look at it. So we're going to go to the non-transferred section it is and once we have this photo transferred over as you can see it's pretty sharp we have to exit out of that go back to device images then click the, on the latest one and now you have the option on the bottom right corner to send that over to a to theta plus now here we are on the theta plus app and if you want to edit in tiny planet or in the straight version However you want to edit, you can just choose like that. I prefer to click on Tiny Planet and then adjust accordingly. That way we can spin it around and stuff. Just zoom in to whatever angle we like. You can also ch click on the um, orientation. So you can crop it anywhere you like with the free crop, like this. Or if you want, you can just do full screen and that'll be good for your Instagram story. So let's go back to editing. And now we can adjust, bring that maybe the highlights down a little bit and exposure is fine. You can saturate it a tiny bit more. If you want, you can also just edit using these presets. However, they're a bit strong. So we'll bring that saturation down. Okay, happy with that. Press check mark and then save and save the camera roll. I'll do one more to show you how to do a tiny planet. We'll click on an older photo that would look cooler for tiny planet here. Edit in Theta Plus, click tiny planet, 
and there we go. It automatically changes from this look to this look. And now we can adjust our tiny planet as we see fit. Okay, now if you want to animate your photos like I have done in this video, this is how we accomplish that. So we click bottom right, edit in theta plus, like usual. Now in mirror ball, click on animation and it defaults to this horizon pan view. However, we want to customize our own keyframes, so click on customize. And now just zoom into the space that you want to start. Click bottom right there. And now slide to your final position. And again, click that plus. And then adjust the speed you want the panning to go. And that's it. Just save it once you're happy. Custom animation. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to mention is the price of this Ricoh Theta Z1 is $1,000. If that is out of your price range and you're looking for more of a beginner model, you're just getting into 360, they do have an SC2 that is only $300, which is a great option for beginner yet still super high quality photography. But yes, that officially wraps it up for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you did enjoy it, please leave a thumbs up, drop a comment down below. I'll try and get back to all of your questions that you may have and consider subscribing if you aren't already and we'll catch you in the next one.